Hey, it's Grant with Grant Bakes, and today we're making the Country Loaf from Tartine Bread. Tartine is a bakery in San Francisco, and this has become one of the kind of standard sourdough breads that are popular, at least on Instagram right now. Uh, you got that crusty, dark outer crust and a soft interior bread. So I think it's a fun bread to make, and I want to show you how to make it. Uh, so this recipe calls for uh, enough dough to make two loaves of bread. We're just going to make one because I just want to make one. Uh, it's actually a three-day process. Uh, the first night you make your starter, feed your starter, and on the second day you make the dough, and then on the third day you bake your bread. So let's go. So for one loaf of tartine bread, we need to make 100 grams of sourdough starter. So he calls it 11 in the book. But we just basically need to make 100 grams of starter. So for that we're going to have 25 grams of whole grain flour, whole wheat flour, 25 grams of white bread flour, 50 grams of warm water, and then he calls for one tablespoon of starter. So I just pulled my starter from the fridge. I measured out everything beforehand. I'm just going to put in the 50 grams of water, then the one tablespoon of starter, stir the starter into the water, I have to mix it around a little bit, then I'm going to add the bread flour and the whole wheat flour. Then stir all of that up until there are no dry bits of flour left. Alright, I stirred the starter together. This should give me enough for about uh, exactly 100 grams of starter uh, for the bread recipe. Uh, the author of Tartine says this should grow about 20 to 30 percent overnight, so we'll see how much uh, it grows by tomorrow morning. I'm just going to let this rest on the counter overnight and I'll make the bread tomorrow. Alright guys, it's 12 hours after we fed the starter. Got a little late start this morning and as you can see those 12 hours have given us a starter that's risen to about double in size and it might have even started to fall down. Uh, but that's alright. As you can see, the starter is really active, and we're going to make our dough with that this morning. Alright, let's build our dough. The book um, calls for a recipe that makes two loaves. Remember, we're just making one loaf, so anything you see in the book, uh, I'm cutting the recipe in half. Um, so it calls for 450 grams of bread flour. This is the brand I'm using today. 50 grams of whole wheat flour. 350 grams of water. It calls for water at 80 degrees. I just kind of got a little bit lukewarm. So 350 grams of water and then 100 grams of the starter that we made last night. We're going to start by just putting in the 350 grams of water to our scale. Almost there. Perfect. So to the 350 grams of water, we're going to add 100 grams of our starter. You know, some of it's sinking, some of it's floating. He says to make sure you do the float test with your starter, but I know because my starter doubled in size and it just started sinking down, uh, that it's not as active as it should be anymore, but I know it's going to work just from experience. So if your starter has doubled in size, it's risen, you don't necessarily need to worry about the float test working. As you can see, some of it's floating, some of it's not. That's all right. 
Okay, I've got all the starter 100 grams dissolved into the water. Now I'm going to add the flours that I've pre-measured. So I'm going to add the 450 grams of bread flour. And the 50 grams of whole wheat flour. Now he says to mix this with your hands. Do what you want. I'm going to mix it with a spoon. Mix this till it just all comes together and there aren't really any dry bits of flour left. Alright, I tried to mix this so there are no dry bits left. It took about two to three minutes of just mixing with the spoon. Um, and now comes the rest period. Uh, so this first rest period, the book says to take about 25 to 40 minutes. So I'm going to come back to this, cover it up, come back in a half hour, and then we can mix in the salt and a little bit more water. So I'm just going to cover the dough with a fancy plate and come back to it in a half hour. Our dough has now been resting for 40 minutes. I let it go a full 40 minutes. Now the book says to add the salt. So for one loaf, that's 10 grams of salt right on top. There's a little more. And then 25 grams of water. That water is going to obviously add more liquid to the dough, but it'll help the salt dissolve. The book says incorporate the salt by squeezing the dough between your fingers. All right. It's kind of fun. All right, so try to get all the dough that's kind of sticking to the bottom of the bowl. Squeeze everything through your fingers. And then it says give the dough a couple of turns on each side. So what it means by that is grab one side of the dough. Imagine there are four parts. Pull it up and fold it over. Turn your bowl. Grab this side. Pull it up and fold it over. This side up and over. The last side. Pull it up and put it over. So our dough is really fragile right now because we just added salt and it hasn't had much time to develop gluten. Um, so I think during the next couple hours while we're still doing more folds, the dough is going to gain a lot of strength. Uh, so the book says to put it, transfer it to a clear glass container. It says some kind of clear container. So I've got this clear glass container. Easily transfer the dough there. And so we're going to continue folding our dough a few more times during this bulk fermentation stage. And as we do that, our dough is going to start developing more and more gluten, and it's going to start filling with air as the dough ferments. So like I'm doing, you can just let your dough rest here sitting on the counter um, for another half hour. The book says 25 to 40 minutes. I'm just going to go a half hour this time and come back and do another set of folds. A half hour has gone by since our first set of folds and we're going to do the next set of folds. I think we're going to do a total of three, so this will be the second of three folds that we do. It says to get your hand wet before touching the dough. Yeah, so just ran some water over my hand. I'm going to scoop out one side of the dough. Look how stretchy it is compared to last time. Fold it over. Turn the container. Fold over this side, turn the container, fold over the third side, and the last side. Alright, so that was the second set of folds. We're going to do one more, a 
half hour from now. And then that will be our last set of folds. So again, just let the dough rest covered on your counter for a half hour. All right, it's been a half hour and we're gonna fold our dough one last time. covered the dough again and it's going to rest here on the counter. This time it's going to rest for two hours before we shape our dough. So we'll let it rest for two more hours. Wow, it has been a total of four hours since this, since I mixed the starter in with the flour and water. It has been a total of four hours. And so it's been fermenting or bulk rising that whole entire time. And you can definitely tell a difference. It has completely filled up the whole container and there's just a bunch of bubbles. So what the tartine bread book calls for next is pre-shaping the dough. So what we're going to do is turn out this dough onto a floured surface. So I'm going to make one area of my counter right here just cover in a little bit of flour. I'm gonna grab the dough, kind of do some pulls, some turns, just like I have been doing, just to separate the dough from the sides of the container. Then I'm gonna reach my hand under and lay out the dough on the counter. So how we're going to pre-shape this is literally just do more stretching and folding, grab an edge, pop any big bubbles if you see them, but just grab one of the sides, pull it into the center. Grab one of the sides, pull it into the center. Until we have a nice ball like that. And then we're going to flip this over on to the non-floured part of the counter so the seam side is down. And now that the seam side is down, we're just going to create some tension in the dough by taking one end and pulling it, rotating and pulling it, rotating and pulling it. Do that about four times. And then we're going to let this rest for 30 minutes and then we're going to give it its final shape for the day. Okay, it's been a half hour and so now I'm going to give the tartine sourdough bread its final shape. What I'm going to do is shape it up in an oval and put it in this oval shaped banneton basket and then it's going to go in the fridge going to be there all today and all night and then I'll bake it tomorrow. So to shape this up I'm going to use this flour area of the counter and turn this over this top side down on the counter again. So I grab my bench scraper, scoop the bread underneath, turn it out. Alright it doesn't feel that sticky or anything. So to put this in to shape this into a batard or oval shape. This is slightly different than what uh, the book says to do, but I find this way works for me. Take one side and fold it over. Press it down a little bit. Then I take the other side and fold it over as well. Press it down. Then I'm going to take this and roll it all the way back. Roll and tuck. Roll and tuck. Roll and tuck. 
Roll and tuck. Roll and tuck. So now I've got a nice oval. And I take this side, this little flap right here, fold it under, just to create even more tension. Take this flap on this side, fold it under, tension on both sides, and on the top. So there's our final shape. Got this flowered Banneton basket. I'm going to carefully pick this up and transfer it into the basket, seam side up. So that's a big loaf, it's taking up the whole basket. I'm going to put this directly in the fridge where it's going to rest in there, proofing all day and all night, and I'll bake it tomorrow. It is the next morning and I am ready to bake my tartine sourdough bread. Uh, right now I'm just turning my oven on to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's preheating, that's what the book uh, says to turn it to. Turn it just as high as you can if it can't go to 500. 450 should work too. And I'm putting a, a Dutch oven inside uh, my oven, which I'll show you now. There's my trusty Dutch oven that I use for bread. So go ahead and put this in your oven while it's preheating to 500. Preheat it for about 20 to 30 minutes. So it's been 20 minutes that my oven has been preheating. I pulled my bread out of the fridge. This is what it looks like. Uh, you can feel it's really cold and just feeling it gently, it kind of gives a little bit and is kind of fragile, but it's not overproofed, not too bad. I can tell that this will be perfect to bake today. Um, you're going to need some method of transferring your bread into the Dutch oven. I usually use parchment paper, but today I'm going to use this uh, makeshift peel for my bread. And I'm going to use some whole wheat flour for dusting the peel. And then I've got this razor blade that I'm going to use for scoring the bread. I'm just going to hold this with my hand. One thing I forgot is my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and brush off the excess flour on top of this dough. Once that's taken care of, now we're gonna score the dough. And now I flip the bread this way because I wanna show you guys how I score uh, my loaf of bread. I actually posted another video about how to score your bread, how to get a really good ear on your sourdough. That's when the bread bakes and along the slash line it really flips up right here and gives you that nice curved edge. Um, today I'm just going to try to imitate to the best of my ability the bread on the front of this book. We'll see if it comes out anything like this. Just kind of kind of make it right in the center. A slight edge. We'll see how that ends up looking. All right, my bread is slashed. I'm gonna transfer this into my Dutch oven. Okay, I transferred the bread onto the Dutch oven. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. This traps the steam during the first half of baking. I'm gonna bake that for about 20 minutes at 500. That's my 20 minute timer. Let's see what we got going on. Take this lid off. Oh wow. Really expanded, pretty big in the oven. All right, so now we're gonna continue baking this for another 20 minutes with the lid off. And I'm gonna keep my oven at 500 degrees. We'll see what this looks like in 20 minutes. And that's my timer. Let's see what the final product looks like. There's our bread. 
This bread definitely puffed up nicely in the oven. Um, it's very crusty, crackly. You can even hear it just like singing, cracking on its own while it's sitting here resting. Um, it's very tall. Here's a wooden spoon that I pulled it out of the oven with. It's about twice as tall as that wooden spoon. It's gonna make some nice slices. Uh, even compared to the picture on the front of tartine bread, I think that's, that's close enough for me anyway. I'm gonna let this rest like the book suggests for about uh, two to four hours. I've got something to do this afternoon. I'll come back uh, later in the afternoon and slice it open and show you what it looks like. And that was how to make tartine country bread, one of the great sourdough breads from San Francisco. If you are interested in all things sourdough, I highly recommend you read the book Tartine Bread by Chad Robertson. It's definitely a book to add to your reading list. Also, like and subscribe to my channel, Grant Bakes. I'd love to share more YouTube tutorials with you for sourdough and just other bread-related videos. I'd love to see you on the next video. Later, guys.